Okay. I think we're live here. How's everybody doing? Hopefully well. Just got done writing out my notes for what I want to say here in this video. I'm going to keep this uh, short and to the point because I just felt compelled. We were watching some of the coverage of what's going on, and I was just kind of thinking, okay, you know, I mean, how many times have we seen Israel attacked and, you know, fighting and things over there? I mean, I've been seeing it since I was, you know, young. Uh, all their stuff going on in, in Israel. What else is new? But this time, I think it's different. Um, you know, seeing Benjamin Netanyahu, you know, declaring war, and I just kind of thought, yeah, I don't know, it's still too early to tell. But then just seeing um, this thing of one of the military brass guys or whatever saying that they're cutting off power, water, and food to the Palestinians, and I thought, uh oh, okay, that's not a small thing, that's pretty big. That's you know, and then there was an oil embargo. That America did to Japan, which caused the attack on Pearl Harbor. So you're that's a you know, declaration of war there, definitely. And um, you know, so pretty crazy stuff. But um, <clears throat> Stranger Than Fiction channel, he brought out a video on this whole thing. And then he linked to one of my old studies I did on the real location of the the Temple Mount. I did it many years ago, back when we still had our place in Bridgewater. Um, I don't know the exact year when that study was done, but it's gotten a lot of views. I think it's over 200,000 views or something. Unless YouTube took, you know, views away. I don't know. <laughs> that could change at any time. But, um, you know, he made a point, which I think is very interesting. And that is that now that things are not going good in Ukraine, they're going to have to shift the focus of war to Israel. And I think that's a big part of it. Um, just actually heard uh, Colonel Douglas McGregor, heard him interviewed, and he was interviewed a little while ago by um, Tucker Carlson, and he said that there's something like 400,000 dead Ukrainian soldiers and, you know, 50, 60,000 injured or something like that. Well, he, I heard him interviewed just the other day, and he said, actually, the number's up to 450,000 dead Ukrainian soldiers. That is a huge number. I mean, we have Vietnam, Vietnam Memorial, um, the cross, there's Memorial, Veterans, Veterans Memorial, Memorial Library. yeah, Veterans Memorial Library across the road from us here. And they have a memorial to, you know, some of the guys that were killed in Vietnam and, you know, um, and they have, you know, the, the national memorial for Vietnam and it was, you know, 50,000 Ukraine's 450,000. So it's not going good for NATO and Ukraine right now. And so, you know, instead of just saying, you know, we surrender, we didn't do it or whatever, uh, they have to keep this momentum going and we have to have a war, you know, and, and whatever. So um, I think that's where it's headed, quite frankly. We're going to be going into this war with uh, Israel now, we'll get the tension away from Ukraine. And it's funny because I remember Andy Schechtman from uh, Miles Franklin, I think it's uh, silver, their precious metal dealer. And I saw him interviewed and he said, there's only three ways out of this economy problem that we have in America because we're just printing more and more money. And that is one is to default on the debt and just say, boom, it's over. You know, we can't pay the debt and declare bankruptcy as a nation. That's one option. The other one is to hyperinflate the currency, which also destroys the country the third one is to blame the fall of america on war and i think that that's what they're going with they don't want to admit to messing up the nation with the fiat currency and everything else that we have here in america fiat currency just it's not real it's not really backed up by you know precious metals or any anything real it's just debt based so point number two i want to make um i believe that israel will probably use this you know, attack thing to seize more land. I do believe it was a real attack, by the way. Definitely, it's, you know, I think so. But again, they just didn't know that this was going to happen. Come on. But they're going to use it to seize more land, get into the Gaza Strip there and take more land away from the Palestinian people 
Um, ultimately, as a Bible believing Christian, that land belongs to Israel. Now, Israel has a lot of problems. There's a lot of things going on there, too. So I'm not just a complete, total blind supporter of the nation of Israel. Um, I'm not. But the Jewish people have a right to that land. And there's a lot of people in Israel, by the way, that aren't Jews. So that's another issue. <laughs> I'm going to be doing a study on that. I actually have the notes written for it. Where my oh notebooks right there, big study coming out on um, the seed of Israel and everything else. So, um, but uh, NATO countries could get drawn into a war defending Israel. Again, there's talk of that. Oh, there's hostages and whatever else that uh, have been taken. American citizens have been taken. There's been some video released. We saw some of that of um, Americans being taken, and so now they're saying. Maybe we'll have to send in, a, you know, U.S. troops and whatever else. So I really think America's in a desperate state right now. So what they're trying to do, what our, you know, Guni military is trying to do is they're trying to pick fights with people so that then we can say we were attacked. We had no choice. We had to go to war. And so now we have to, you know, your country needs you, you know, like the old propaganda of uh, World War One. You know, there was an old song. Um, I forget, it was some quartet that sang it. It was, your country needs you, so what will you do? You know, it's fight, fight, fight for Uncle Sam, you know, all the stuff that they used to pull with the First World War, and then they did a lot of the same propaganda for the Second World War. And um, America was always, it was founded to not intervene in foreign wars and entanglements. It was only supposed to have, the military was supposed to guard our borders. That's it. So they've been doing the thing of we have to get a pretext for war. World War One, you had the sinking of Lusitania. World War Two, you had Pearl Harbor. Or, or uh, I forget what it was for the Korean War, but Vietnam War. What was it? It was um, uh, the Gulf of Tonkin. Okay. Um, of course, the whole war in Afghanistan, the war in Iraq. It was 9/11. So and you can, you know, uh, Saddam Hussein invaded Kuwait. That was the first Gulf War. You know, so we're going into another one. Um, NATO, like I said, will side with Israel. BRICS, on the other hand, will side with Palestine, the Palestinians there, because of their connections with the Muslim different members that are part of the BRICS countries. BRICS is going to be going with a pro-Islamic stand, in other words. I can see that happening. So again, see, it's going to further the world agenda. NATO and BRICS, you know, it's going to push more countries into you know, which side are you on? Are you with us or are you with BRICS? You know, that's what they're going to do. Um, and a in, very, very interesting thing a lot of people don't even know about is that the yield curve, okay, when it inverts, it always leads to a uh, recession or even a Great Depression within 12 to 15 months. Do you know when the yield curve inverted, when it started? October 2022. Hmm. So 12 to 15 months later, or 12 months later, you wouldn't think that they would create a war to distract from the fact that the economy is about ready to crash. They wouldn't do that. No. They, you know. No, they would not do that. They would not even think about doing it. I know. They're honest. The government's honest. Mm -hmm. Definitely. You, wouldn't, you don't have to worry about it. So, yeah. Hmm. Um, so this... And it's always happens. There's no way out of this. Whenever the yield curve inverts, when it goes down, you can study that issue if you want to. Whenever it inverts, it's 12 to 15 months every single time like clockwork, and you have a recession or a Great Depression if it's really bad. And by the way, it inverted, and it didn't come out of that. So it's still going down. So it's going to be a very bad situation. Um, have to pray, brethren. There's some rough times coming, like the Bible said in the last times perilous or in the last days perilous times shall come all right and the last days it's not just oh you know it's going to hit here it's going to be bad and then boom the catching up of the body of christ is going to happen you know within a month or something uh no i think we're we're going to see some pretty rough stuff here before we go home um and quite frankly america needs to see some rough stuff because people don't take the bible seriously they don't they don't care about jesus christ or salvation or anything else so people really need to see some crazy stuff happening. Um, but prophetically speaking, uh, a war that's going on over there in Israel, well, 
you know, the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence and the violent take it by force. The kingdom of heaven um, is centered in Jerusalem, you know, and so that's where the Lord's going to rule and reign from in the thousand year kingdom. Um, so that, you know, the city of the great king is what Jerusalem is, according to scripture in the New Testament. So um, there will always be fighting over there. But what we have to keep an eye on as Christians is we have to keep an eye on the thing of the Mosque of Omar. Okay. And again, I saw the thing they, they had um, the Islamic mosques or whatever that they were playing on loudspeakers for Muslims to attack Jews over there in Israel. And so if the fighting gets really intense and the Mosque of Omar gets taken out, that could be very significant. Now, that's not the real place where the Temple Mount was. It's a Roman fort, Fort Antonia, um, is where that wall is and whatever else. Again, you can watch my old video that I did on that issue. That's not the real location of the Temple Mount. But I think that they could probably, you know, blow the thing up and then they could build the Antichrist Temple there where the Antichrist will rule and reign from. And that could take years. Again, they could be building this temple while we're still here on the earth. But the Antichrist is not going to show up until the body of Christ is taken up there. How do you know that? Because John's in heaven before the Antichrist is revealed. And the 24 elders are in heaven before the Antichrist is unveiled or revealed. And also the uh, great multitude of angels round about the throne. So I've talked about that in many studies. And um, he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. So that's another big issue. So keep an eye on the Mosque of Omar. All right. Keep an eye out for that. And if you see that, then it's going to be a wow. And that's the time that you can start to talk to your relatives and say, OK, conflict in Israel. The mosque just got taken out. Watch what happens next. They're going to start to rebuild the temple in Israel. So that could be very interesting. I don't, again, I don't know how that works out. There could be they could actually build on the real temple site, which is in the, in the city of David, not on Fort Antonio there. That could happen, too. They could actually build where it's supposed to be built. I don't know. Um, but here's another one. OK, and this one's very important. Please pay attention to this. This conflict could also start strife slash civil war in America. Again, I'm already seeing the news coverage of it. New York City, uh, I think it was yesterday or something, they're already having protests and people, you know, people that are pro-Israel, the Jews that are in it in New York. And then you have the people that are pro-Palestine, which is Muslims and also a lot of the greenies. They call, you know, Israel being there in Palestine, they call it, you know, um, colonialism or something like this. And it's people are, are, you know, they're taking the land from the Palestinian people and whatever. Well, technically, it's their land. It's the nation of Israel's land, all right? They lost it over the years through the Crusades and all the other stuff, but that anger, that animosity is going to be there. So I am for Israel having their land, but the modern day state of Israel is there in unbelief, all right? And so, and again, you have, you know, the argument, well, I can prove that there are people in, in Israel that aren't really Jews. Yes, I can, I would agree with that. But then there are some that I do believe are Jews. And God has brought them back in unbelief, which you can see my study on that that I did not long ago about the why why Jews need to leave America. And again, this could be part of that whole thing where the Lord's going to actually start to push the Jews out of America because it could get really bad for them here. And then you also have the Winslow plan. If you don't know about that, I've talked about that in some of my older videos. There was a guy that came up with this thing of the Winslow plan, and it was basically that American military, the American military would attack the holy uh, sites of Islam, um, which would be a little bit provocative. <laughs> uh, get a few things with war going on there. So, um, but look over the next few days, look for attacks on Jews in America, and we'll see how bad this thing's going to be. They're either going to go with this thing and run with it, and it's going to be the start of World War III, or they'll say, okay, too many people are coming out saying things about this. We better let it die down. Let's just kind of back off here a little bit and, you know, we'll we'll do it again later or something. I don't know which way that they're going to go with this. But if you see attacks happening on Jewish synagogues or on Jewish people here in America, then, you know, OK, they're going hot with this thing. They're going big time with this. And that could be what starts a lot of the fighting here in America. And it could spill over into things. 
And brethren, if there are Muslims in your area, please be careful, right? Because they don't just see it's not going to be just hatred for the Jews. It's also going to be hatred for the Jews and those who support the Jews, namely America. And there are sleeper cells all across this country of radical Muslims and lots of other people that are ready to take up arms and go to work and attack and whatever else. Um, I mean, you can see what happened over there in Israel. Very, um, very low budget attacks from the Palestinians, from Hamas or whatever, but they're able to do a lot. You know, that's one of the problems with all the high tech warfare and all these missiles and jets and everything else. You know, it's not as effective as guys with guns just running in and have a calls and they can come in on motorcycles. They can come in, grab a tractor, take down part of the border or whatever else, you know, the border fence gate thing there, get in there, tear that down and flood in and make a bunch of chaos stuff happen and then run out. And you're seeing that. So if they can do it over there, it can happen here. And that's pretty insane to think about. You know, that we could be seeing some real chaos on the streets. Be in prayer, brethren. Um, you know, yes, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Pray for the Israeli people, the Jews. Um, again, the Bible doesn't say that they're all Jews over there. They're not. There's a lot of fakes over there, and there are a lot of interests and whatever else that are not in line with Scripture. Um, but, you know, certainly pray for them. But keep an eye out for what's going on here in America. Okay? Um, very important. And uh, and I heard that uh, they're, they just also um, they uh, called up, I guess, 300,000 soldiers in Israel. You know the draftees or whatever else they're sort of their reserves you know over there in israel so um that's no small thing either so uh, it could get okay we'll just kind of seal this off for now or this could be very big and um and again brethren this is the time when you can say um all right lord i'm ready I have my Bible ready. Start carrying your Bible with you wherever you go and say, Lord, use me for a divine appointment. You might go into work tomorrow and people will be looking at the television, watching what's going on and saying, what's this about? You say, well, actually, the Bible says <laughs> there'd be things that happen over in Jerusalem, you know, and start going through, do some studies on, on Israel and Jerusalem and say, this is what's supposed to happen. There will be a come coming a antichrist, a man of sin, that he's going to come. He's going to try to bring peace to this whole thing of Israel, and he's going to confirm a covenant. And I believe the covenant is confirmed with Jews and Catholics, not Jews and Muslims. I don't believe in that. Um, and again, you can watch my old study I did on that. It's about the the temple, you know, the real location of the temple or something. Can't remember what exactly what it's called. But uh, very exciting times, very exciting. And so <laughs> I don't know, brethren, um, th because this is, you know, it's not the time of the church's trouble that's coming. It's the time of Jacob's trouble. And God is going to punish the whole world because of what the Jews have been doing. The Jews have been very wicked. They're getting involved in Hollywood. They're getting involved in finance. They're getting involved in the music industry and all kinds of stuff. They have been very sinful and very wicked, and it's all because they've rejected Jesus Christ as their Messiah. And um, you might run into some Jews as well, and you might just want to say to them, hey, you know, it's the time of Jacob's trouble that's coming. And you can get out of that by putting your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. So look for opportunities to witness. Keep your head on a swivel, as the saying goes. Watch what's going on. Don't just you know, walk along whistling, you know, and think, I mean, don't be fearful, but be, be um, vigilant. Okay. Be very vigilant with what's coming. Um, so I guess that will be it for now. Just wanted to put this quick live stream together. Thank you to everybody out there for watching. Um, so, uh, Crazy times, brethren. Here we go. But um, 
Uh, his mind is stayed in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusteth in thee. Um, now's the time for the comfort of the scriptures. Uh, keep your Bible nearby, all right, because you're going to need it in these times ahead. So I'm going to try to be recording my sermon here in another couple of days or whatever else. It'll be out sometime soon. But um, let's pray for one another. Pray without ceasing. In everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Uh, we'll see you in the next video, and uh, thank you for watching.